an investigation is underway into the death of a 30-year-old man found in the back bedroom of a home with serious head injuries. The family of miners killed on the job confront a coal executive charged for the deadliest mine explosion in four decades. Deputies in Boyle County look for a bold thief who's breaking into cars. This is WQIT News at 5.30. Good evening to you. A lot of questions remain as to what happened to a man found dead in southern Kentucky. People living in a home on Robinson Creek Road south of London found the body of 30-year-old Anthony Johnson in a bedroom. This afternoon, police say they now believe foul play was involved. Hillary Thornton has more now from Laurel County in our top story at 5.30. Less than 24 hours after 30-year-old Anthony Johnson was found dead inside of his home, a man is behind bars charged with murder, his twin brother, Antonio. The investigation started after deputies were called to the home off of Robinson Creek Road by two people who live there. Had found a, a man deceased in the back bedroom that was also a resident there. Neighbors say the Johnson twins lived in the home for less than a year with one other person. Investigators say the twin now sitting in jail told them his brother hit himself repeatedly with a hammer. Individual in the back bedroom uh, deceased. He had uh, head trauma wounds. Deputies say they do not think Johnson's death happened very long before they were called here to this home Tuesday afternoon. Uh, all of these residents, uh, according to our investigation thus far, all these residents had uh, been in contact with each other earlier. A neighbor also saying she saw Anthony Johnson outside talking to another man when she left for work Tuesday morning, just hours before he was found dead. In Laurel County, Hillary Thornton, WKYT. And we reached out to Antonio Johnson just after he was charged with his brother's murder. He did not want to talk to us from jail. A Kentucky-born coal executive tied to the deadliest mine explosion in four decades is headed to prison. Today, Don Blankenship learned his sentence in connection to the 2010 explosion at Upper Big Branch Mine that killed 29 miners south of Charleston in West Virginia. WKYT's Jennifer Palumbo is at the live desk with some new information. Jennifer? Amber, a federal judge sentenced Blankenship to one year in prison. He also must pay a $250,000 fine. But that punishment did not sit well with the miners' families. I hope you never have Obviously, to bury your kid like we did. Out here the we buried our kid because of you. The racist the to see your voice. How the hell do you raise your head up? Blankenship was the CEO of Massey Energy, even though he was convicted of willfully violating mine safety standards at Big Branch Mine, one year in prison was the maximum possible sentence. He'll also spend one year on supervised release after he gets out of prison. Blankenship was born in Pike County. He has 10 days to report to prison, but it's unclear which prison that will be. At the live desk, Jennifer Palumbo, WKYT. Jennifer, thank you. Blankenship has 14 days to file an appeal in that case. It looks like we have a very busy week of weather here in the bluegrass. We are tracking storms and strong winds right now. Let's check in with Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey with an early look at your forecast. Yeah, a lot of heavy rain out there. Thunder and lightning threat now beginning to diminish somewhat, but the winds have been hitting 40 to 45 miles an hour in western Kentucky right now, seeing some gusts greater than 50 to 55 miles an hour. We'll keep a very close eye on that. Showers across central Kentucky right now with some very heavy rains, and this stuff is moving through here. Very, very quickly, heaviest rain right on top of I-75, Sadieville, Georgetown, into the Lexington area, back into Versailles Road, Versailles Midway, into Woodford County. Now we start to see those soaking rains across most of Fayette County, working into the Clark County area. Look at that live sky cam. It is dancing around with winds gusting to 40 miles an hour right now at the station and some heavier downpours that are ongoing. Little trip into northern parts of Madison County, Richmond, the Red House area, getting in on very heavy rains. That extends down toward Berea as well. Here's a look at downtown Richmond, campus of EKU. Students going around with ponchos and the umbrellas, though you may have a tough time keeping the umbrella 
from uh, kind of going inside out on you with those gusty winds. A little farther to the west, Danville getting in on some showers. Also seeing a little batch of some heavier rain southeastern Kentucky. Let's follow that band of heavy rain and high wind producing showers and storms. Western Kentucky, Owensboro, just to the north into Evansville with a wind gust greater than 60 miles per hour. So storms are on the move. Much colder air will follow as we get in on a rather ugly pattern as we go closer to the weekend. I'm even tracking at least a small chance for a couple of uh, snowflakes. I can't even say it now when I come back in a few minutes. All right, Chris, thank you. Police say a woman out on bond from a previous drug arrest is in trouble with the law again. Our county by county coverage at 5:30 begins in Madison County. Yesterday, police charged 45 year old Nancy Bristow for drug trafficking. Undercover police purchased drugs from Bristow on two occasions in early January. Bristow was out on bond for a prior trafficking arrest in October of last year. In Letcher County, three people are behind bars after meth was discovered hidden at a pharmacy. Police say they recognize recognized a wanted man, Curtis Thompson, sitting inside a car in the parking lot of a Rite Aid. Police also arrested Shane Halcom and the car's passenger, Natasha Gaynor, after meth was discovered hidden in a contact lens case containing a white powder hidden behind a row of baby diapers. Court records show more than 10 meth-related arrests have been made in Letcher County within the last two weeks. Today, wreckage was hauled off for more inspection as federal investigators look into what caused a fatal helicopter crash. The crash happened Monday afternoon between Sevierville and Pigeon Forge, two major tourist draws in East Tennessee. Today, investigators still offered no clues so far as to the cause of the crash that killed five people. Evidence is being sent to Washington, D.C., and officials say figuring out a cause could take up to a year. Well, and what we'll do is we'll take the factual information from these areas and others and put it into a comprehensive factual report which will be sent to the NTSB board in Washington, D.C., and they'll ultimately determine a probable cause. A small fire started by the crash reignited today, though crews were quickly able to put that out. Deputies in Boyle County investigating a recent string of car burglaries in that area, and they say it's the work of a bold thief. Sean Moody has more now from Boyle County in a story that's new at 5.30. Brian Riddle is working on a mess there. Just another day. This day, he's cleaning up after criminals. Just on door glasses where somebody's broke into them. It's been a problem on Pico Circle in Boyle County. This is number two. Now, as Brian finishes up this car, he's not finished. There were five reports of car break ins just here in this neighborhood, which means he's going to be busy. A lot of people are frustrated. A deputy with the Boyle County Sheriff's Office said whoever did these break ins was pretty bold. Instead of just looking for unlocked cars, he said the thief broke out windows on several of the cars and, in one case, tried to raise a garage door. None of the people who got hit wanted to talk on camera, but they said they were frustrated. Brian said he knew something was going on when he saw his schedule today. Well, when you get them all in the same area like this, you kind of know that. Vandalism or something has happened. Brian worked through all the windows pretty quickly. I would say it's all like that easy. But it was still an inconvenience for the people who said they had to miss work to get repairs done. Now we put it all back together again. They hope investigators will find that thief soon. In Boyle County, Sean Moody, WKYT. A deputy also warned that in some of those break ins, valuables were left in plain sight. Authorities are warning about a growing scam called ransomware. Hackers disable personal computers and even entire networks, then demand a ransom to give the users their files back. They're targeting everyone from consumers to businesses to even towns. Plainfield, New Jersey, a town of roughly 50,000 people, was taken hostage. The hijacker has requested or demanded a ransom. Mayor Adrian Mapp says hackers infiltrated their computer system when an employee clicked on an infected link. City officials scrambled to pull servers offline, but three were compromised, leaving emails and other city files inaccessible. We have about 10 years of documents that we are not able to access. The hijackers held the files ransom, demanding roughly 650 euros paid in Bitcoin. The mayor asked for help from law enforcement, but remains helpless in regaining access. Plainfield was a victim. Who should be concerned? Everyone should be concerned. Of ransomware. The director of a cybersecurity firm says once a computer is infected, 
It encrypts all files or locks the user out until they pay for the key. We have a documents folder here. You he demonstrated just how it works. The ransomware is communicating with a server. The server is sending instructions here to start encrypting all these files. In 2014, the FBI received over 1,800 complaints about ransomware, an estimated loss of more than 23 million. In 2015, the Bureau received over 2,400 complaints, and victims lost over 24 million. These are just the cases that are being reported. We suspect that there are many more out there that haven't been. Experts say it's important to avoid clicking on suspicious links that can allow hackers into your computer. You should also back up your files. A town of Plainfield, New Jersey, did not pay that ransom, and since then, the hackers have disappeared. Big news for Kentucky Democrats voting in next month's primary. That story in seven minutes on WKYT. I'm Bill Bryant. Lawmakers try again to come up with a Kentucky budget. Another dramatic night in the presidential race, and a former Lexington leader has died. The bottom line is ahead. I'm Victor Puente in Lee County. But the families of three people who were in this home yesterday when it burned are waiting for answers. Coming up at 6, you'll hear from a sister about what they've lost. Visit our fireplace showroom or shop online at barnhillchimney.com. You may be entitled to $1,500 for each call you've received from any company collecting a debt. Seems too good to be true, but it's the law. Hi, I'm Diana with Kevin's Carpets. We understand how hard it is to buy floors. That's why you need to come to the flooring experts and let Chad, Rebecca, and I help you with your flooring needs. Kevin's Carpets in Lexington and Georgetown. Why, well, you'd be crazy to buy flooring anyplace else. Before contemplating the many choices on Steak and Shake's $4 menu, one must calm the mind in our Zen garden. Focus. The garlic double steak burger meal. Reflect. The taco salad meal. Zen. The original double and cheese steak burger meal. Oh! The $4 menu, where all meals are under $4 at Steak and Shake. By the numbers, Whitaker Bank loves the Kentucky communities we serve. Over 30,000 Kentuckians are saving time and money by doing their banking online with Whitaker Electronic Banking. 341,000 transactions were made on the go last year using the Whitaker Bank mobile app. Over 340,000 text alerts were sent last year with Whitaker Bank text banking. We share your passion, Kentucky. Love the bank that loves you back. Whitaker Bank is uniquely Kentucky. Honda believes in helping you use your garage to its fullest potential. That's why we're offering great deals on the things you'll want in your garage, like the Honda CRV. The best selling SUV in America comes with a standard multi angle rear view camera and plenty of cargo space. Great for transporting lots of stuff, say to storage or in the dump. Hurry to the Honda Dream Garage sales event. You've got a garage to fill. The most durable, longest lasting brand in its class has great deals. Now at your Honda dealer. There are two camps of DQ S'mores Blizzard Lovers. Camp S'mores and the new Camp Oreo S'mores. Camp S'mores. Camp Oreo S'mores. Camp S'mores. Camp Oreo S'mores. Camp S'mores. Camp Oreo S'mores. A camp for the traditionalist and a camp for the adventurous. Which s'mores camp will you be in? Try the s'mores and new Oreo s'mores blizzard treat today. This is fan food, not fast food. Do you want to lose weight quickly and safely? Do you want to be healthy for a lifetime? Kim did and lost 238 pounds at Ageless Medical Weight Loss. Betty did and lost 135 pounds. The Ageless program is a medically supervised affordable weight loss solution. Call today for a free consultation. Hi, I'm Brian and I buy houses in the Lexington area. No more stress. I can buy your house as is and we'll close professionally with a Lexington attorney. You can get all cash, immediate debt relief, and peace of mind. Call me at 859-278-HELP or go to 278HELP.com. Nominate your favorite teacher today. Go to WKYT.com slash teacher. It's a process. Lawmakers taking another crack at passing a state budget. And voters in Wisconsin shake up the presidential race. Bill Bryan has the details in today's bottom line.
Good evening. As Kentucky's budget standoff continues with just one more day to go in the session, is there any room for compromise that would make a deal happen? On Kentucky Newsmakers, we'll hear from the main players in the debate about how to divvy up the $21 billion in tax money expected to roll into Frankfurt over the next two years. The roadblock, higher education. Republican Senate President Robert Stivers agrees with the governor's priority of putting more money into troubled state retirement funds, in part by cutting state colleges and universities. Democratic House Speaker Greg Stumbo wants to keep the cuts away from higher ed. Stumbo and Stivers were among those who met unofficially in Frankfurt today, and they're set to appear on WKYT's Kentucky Newsmakers this weekend. With Kentucky's Democratic presidential primary now on the horizon coming up on May 17th, the race for the nomination heats up. The win by Bernie Sanders in Wisconsin gives him extra incentive to keep fighting, even though Clinton still holds a strong lead in the pledge delegate count. Both are off to New York for that state's primary on April 19th. Republicans also battling in New York. Ted Cruz's camp said today that Donald Trump has a big problem when he gets his tail kicked. The Cruz campaign says, and that's what happened in Wisconsin. Cruz's margin of victory exceeded what the polls had indicated. No arrangements yet, but City Hall sources say former Lexington Councilmember Julian Beard, who also served as the city's economic development director, has died after a long illness. Beard helped lead efforts to bring business to town under former Mayor Teresa Isaac. After that, he was elected to the city council from the 4th District, where he served until last year. Today, Isaac retweeted a Herald Leader endorsement of Beard from 2012 that called him an engaged, independent voice on council. A battle to our south in the volunteer state where some conservative lawmakers are upset about an event called Sex Week at the University of Tennessee. A piece of legislation in Nashville would strip $437,000 from UT's Office of Diversity and Inclusion if the event continues. The university says Sex Week is educational and includes information about abstinence. Bill Bryant, WKYT. Some Kentucky Democrats can begin voting today for their party's nominee. That's because Kentucky Secretary of State Allison Lundergan Grimes announced the beginning of early voting for the Democratic primary. That's on May 17th. Voters who will not be able to cast a ballot can mail in an absentee ballot. Applications for ballots must be received by the county clerk's office by no later than May 10th and must be completed and turned in by 6 p.m. on Election Day. Now, your hour-by-hour hour forecast with Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey. We have gusty winds across the area right on cue today, blowing showers and thunderstorms into the region. Heavy rain falling right on top of the station. I'll get to that in a moment. Let's concentrate on that wind gust. 41 miles per hour right now in Lexington, far west of Kentucky. Getting reports now of greater than 50 to 55 miles per hour with some of those gusts. Here's what it looks like in Lexington. Heavy rain, kind of an ugly evening commute. Temperatures have dropped into the 50s again, and that wind right at 41 miles per hour over the past little bit. Cold front to our west, so we had one little warm up today. Then we're right back into the thick of the colder air with a front coming in behind this initial surge. That is across western Kentucky as of now. Heavier rains really making a beeline for the bluegrass region as of now. Carlisle, get ready. You've got a few sprinkles right now. It's going to come down at a good clip. Likewise, here into Owingsville, up towards Flemingsburg and the Cynthiana area with some heavier rains. Heaviest rain into the Bluegrass region is right on top of Interstate 64, where it meets the Mountain Parkway here, just to the east of downtown Winchester. Heaviest rain for Lexington on the east side of town. We'll catch a break coming up here in about an hour or so. It's not going to have a very long lifespan, though. Heavy rain into Richmond and Berea. Farther south becomes a little more scattered and eastbound across. Across the Howe Rogers Parkway corridor, Western Kentucky. Here's where we are getting reports now of winds greater than 50 miles an hour. Even severe thunderstorm warnings are out for the Evansville area without thunderstorms because winds with those showers have gusted to 60 to 65 miles an hour. So as that inches its way into town late this evening, yeah, we're going to keep the high winds going. Heaviest rain tonight, end of the day tomorrow, across parts of central and eastern Kentucky. Some of us may pick up 
a half to three quarters of an inch. Localized inch is a possibility. Three day threat track tomorrow. Showers around, not an all day rain. Shower around on Friday, not an all day rain. Could mix with a snowflake though. Friday night into Saturday morning. Are you kidding me? That's when a hard freeze is likely into many areas. 10 o'clock this evening. Showers, maybe a rumble of thunder, and then the temperatures begin to drop tomorrow morning. Tomorrow's one of those days to where it could rain at any moment, then the sun could pop out for a little while, then it could rain again, sun can pop out. You get the idea. Gusty winds are going to make those 40s feel like the 30s. We go into Friday. Cold start to the day and a colder afternoon with a shower threat for folks who are heading out to Keeneland. Not going to rain all day. Say it with me. We go into Saturday. Morning snowflake 27. Look at the lows 29, 27, 23. That would be three consecutive mornings potentially with a hard freeze. We've had a couple already across the region over the past several days, guys. One of the colder first weeks of April on record across our region. You're trying your best to be optimistic, I'm put trying. the best <laughs> look on it. I'm trying. I'm, I'm trying working. to put a positive spin on it. All That's right. right. Thanks, Chris. All right. Well, Tyler Ulyss is departing for the NBA. Tyler's family right there with him this afternoon. What did his dad tell him when the two went down to Houston for the NCAA championship? And we'll hear from the veteran of the Cats O-line, the man who snaps the football. He's one of the keys up front. That's next in sports. This team goes beyond borders to solve mysteries on the new hit drama. This is not protocol. I'm trying to catch a killer. There's no time for protocols. Criminal Minds Beyond Borders tonight. Thursday, big news we know you'll love. Our show's back on. And hooray for love. The oddest odd couple returns. Oscar, Oscar, Oscar. Felix, Felix, shut up. <laughs> Matthew Perry and Thomas Lennon star in the comedy hit. Got him right in the ball. The Odd Couple premieres after The Big Bang Theory, Thursday. Dare to compare. This LG 49-inch LED TV is $449 at HH Gray and only $399 at P-Rex. Save $170 over Lowe's on this Maytag washer. Plus free gift cards up to $500. Nobody beats P-Rex. It was a routine call of Code 7 at a local laundromat. What we saw, well, nothing can prepare you for it. We went in, we approached the victim. He was dying of boredom. Agents of play, sir. We got there just in time. We handed him a scratch-off ticket and watched him play. Thank you. Have fun. I'm serious. His smile, well, that's the only thanks we needed. It's what being an agent of play is all about. Put a little play in your day, week, month, or year with these exciting new scratch-offs from the Kentucky Lottery. Fueling imagination, funding education. Get on your computer or mobile device. Because of all the great Toyota deals out there, most are not seen on TV. That's why you need to visit buyatoyota.com for a huge selection of savings offers that couldn't possibly fit in a TV commercial, including 0% financing, great lease deals, and two-year no-cost maintenance. So get on your computer or mobile device and go to buyatoyota.com, Toyota's official website for deals. Toyota, let's go places. There's nothing like making their day, except making sure their tomorrow is taken care of, too. Financial guidance while you're mastering life. From Chase, so you can. I love Spain. This food, the wine, the tapas. I want to stay here forever. Well, we're not in Spain. We're home. I know, but this food is so delicious. Then it's like a Spain-cation. Head to Kroger for authentic recipes, specially imported foods, and delicious meal ideas at the Taste of Spain event. Cook up fresh Purdue boneless chicken breasts for just $1.99 a pound. And sweet red, yellow, or orange bell peppers are now 10 for $10 at Kroger. Considering bankruptcy? Call Atkinson, Sims, and Kermode. Start your bankruptcy for only $78 now. Dial 859-CALL-ASK for your free consultation. Get this Tempur-Pedic bundle with mattress, adjustable base, two memory foam pillows, mattress protector, and a free 50-inch TV. As low as $49 a month with the power of 60 months, zero interest. Nobody beats P-Rats. Get WKYT news and weather updates on Wild 103.9.
Tyler Ellis becoming the third Wildcat in less than a week to announce that he will enter the NBA draft and sign with an agent. Tyler joins Jamal Murray and Scal LeBissier to announce that they will not be back next season. Tyler's one of the most decorated players to ever wear the blue and white, a consensus All-American SEC Player of the Year. But Ulysses says he was never thinking about accolades. I'm not really into awards much, so you know I really don't say much about it, but I am proud of myself and what I've done because guys have doubted me and said I'm too small to do this and that. But, you know, like I said, I just stay confident in my game and keep playing. We have a lot of conversations about believing in yourself, doing the right thing. Um, it's always based on performance, you know, any of us in your job. You, you know, you're good. If you're doing your job well and you can see it, I mean, I told him a few times over the last couple of weeks, take a second to appreciate what you've done because he's not a boastful kid. He's very humble. But I told him just in Houston, I said, man, you should be really proud of what you've been able to do because it ain't easy. Well, no, it's not. It's not easy. Where will he land in the upcoming draft? Draft Express has Jamal Murray in the lottery, the sixth pick to New Orleans, also in the lottery, Scalabi Sierra at number 10 to Milwaukee, and Eulis, who earlier this season projected a second round pick, now projected at number 20 to Memphis. Cal has seen 25 of his cats drafted since coming to UK. These three would give him 28 players in seven years. Incredible. On to football, UK looking for improved play on its offensive line in the coming season, and a lot will depend on the man who snaps the ball, John Toth. The 6'5 junior will be the anchor of the O-line. Up front, Jordan Swindle, three-year starter, now departed. But O-line coach John Schlarman has about everybody else coming back. And along with a couple of red shirts, he is certainly happy to have a veteran like Toth. Well, I mean, he's just uh, Mr. Consistent. You know, he's smart. He gets us in the right calls. Um, very seldom are we going to the wrong bodies. You know, he, he gets everybody on the same page, which as an offensive line is huge. If you got four guys doing one way and one guy doing his own thing, you know, you have a breakdown. Bad plays happen. So John, you know, does a great job of eliminating that force. He gets everybody working together, going in the right direction. We have more experience coming back, and uh, we have young guys that are um, motivated and um, you know the second team is improving a lot and pushing the first team guys to to get better and there's a lot of competition. What Cal had to say about Tyler Eulis today that's coming up in the next half hour stay with us we're right back after the break.